Vinyl on My Mind is brought to you by December 10. A curated collection with statement pieces sure to make you a perfect 10. Co-founded in 2013 by Tia Blunt and Tori Jones, this Christian company wants to leave a legacy, not just for themselves, but for all women. Their legacy began with their mothers, whose birthdays are both on December 10th. Tia and Tori handpick each piece that you will find on their site. What makes them unique is that they only order one piece. Experience this e-boutique with chic on-trend statement pieces. December 10, Love Life Legacy. Hello there and welcome to Vinyl On My Mind. Today I'll be talking about the best of Benny Goodman, the 1968 RCA Press. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, let's see, here it is. This is what the record looked like. And I think there is actually um, another cover, like if you look this record up online, uh, there's another cover for the same press for the, you know, from RCA. But this is the one I got, front and back, some labels there. And so <laughs> I'm going to just quickly explain to you um, why uh, I have uh, Benny Goodman uh, collection. I, I have this record. I have some other Benny Goodman records. I also have um, a Benny Goodman Peggy Lee uh, compilation. I I have always just been a fan of like <laughs> kind of like uh, the American classics, so to speak. Um, especially when it comes to like old films. Uh, I anything from like the golden age, you know, 1939, right around that time. Uh, I think that was a magical time in cinema. A lot of the, you know, creativity that people are portraying um, today in the indie, um, you know, genre of filmmaking is the type of stuff that Hollywood was trying to do back then. You know, groundbreaking things that a lot of the censors really wouldn't let them do, but they tried to do them anyway. And so the films from that era really embraced, you know, other aspects of the culture, including the music. Um, I can think of countless movies and films that uh, feature, either actually feature Benny Goodman and his orchestra in them, or just has his music in them, and it just it adds so much to that to that era to that time. And I'm just a big fan of it. So. Um, you know, building my record collection anytime I have an opportunity to get something, you know, from that era, especially if it's Benny Goodman, I go for it. This particular record is actually not one of my favorites in my collection just because of some of the um, issues I'm going to mention in just a moment. This record, I believe me and my husband got it. I want to say we paid two dollars for it, if that. Uh, so we didn't pay a lot for it. Usually when we find a really good steal, especially like on some of the records I've mentioned so far, um, we pay like three, four dollars, maybe five dollars for them. Um, we got a really good deal on the Stevie Wonder record, um, Talking Book, if you remember that episode, because it had so much damage on the cover. This particular record doesn't have a lot of obvious damage on the cover, so we didn't get a good deal like on that price. The reason why we got this record for such a good deal is because we bought it at a thrift store and it was just in a pile of records and they were like, these records are a dollar, these records are two dollars. So I can't remember if we got this one from the dollar bin or the two dollar bin. In any case, um, there, you know, it's a little cracked on the sides a bit. Um, I'm, I was surprised that no one wrote on this. It seems like whenever we get something from a thrift store, someone has plastered their name on it as though, you know, property of. I guess that was kind of a thing to do back in the day was to write your name on your stuff. Um, even, you know, it's funny now because we live in the era of, you know, music downloads and everything. You don't have to put your name on your stuff. But I'm trying to think back to, you know, even when CDs were big, I don't remember me and my friends putting like our names on our CDs, but I could be missing something. So anyway, I was surprised that, you know, this didn't have a name plastered on it. There's no notes written on the, you know, the little jacket here. So it's really good quality as far as how it how it looks. Now, the record itself, this is the reason why it's not my favorite. There are, all, I love all of the songs that are on here because, like I said, I'm a fan. But there are two songs in particular that are the most popular 
on side A, it's uh, Good Night, My Love, and I can think of at least two or three uh, movies from the era that that song was in, but it actually lists that it was in the movie Stowaway, which I remember it being in that movie. Uh, and also, there is um, Sing Sing, which is the real famous song that I'm going to play you know, a little snippet for you, and as soon as I start playing, you'll know exactly what it is. And then on side two, they're stomping at the Savoy. That one is one of my favorites. It's um, It sounds like it's a more upbeat song than it is, but it does have kind of like a jazzy groove, you know, for that era. Anyway, so there's a, I could list all the songs on here, but I won't. Look it up for yourself. But two of the songs do have a little scratch on them. And one of them, it's not enough of a scratch to where you have to, you know, reset the, the needle and keep it going. But it, it's, you know, it's an interruption in the song, so that's disappointing. But then the other song does have a scratch to where you have to get up and move the needle, and that's disappointing. But at least it's not on one of those three songs that I just mentioned. So I'm going to show you um, the record because that's what I do all the time. Um, it probably looks shinier than it actually is because of the lighting that I have in here, but this record isn't as shiny as some of the other ones that I've had because, like I said, it's not in as good as condition, but good enough for me at the moment, especially considering I paid either a dollar or two dollars for it. And um, it's an RCA record. It's uh, from their Victor collection. I probably have to do some more research on that, but I have a feeling that Victor is maybe their... Um, their line of like compilation records like where you know they take the best of from different artists because they have like a whole list here of like Victor records so I'll play um, samples of a, a song on side A and side B for you here in just a moment I did want to share with you a little bit of you know what's on the back this it says this is music that captured the spirit of an age and I that's pretty much what I said in my introduction you know this music um, it stood the test of time then and it still stands the test of time now. You you don't hear a lot of stuff like this on the radio now, obviously, but you'd be amazed at how many songs you listen to that have been influenced by the music of the big band era and the swing era. Um, even some of the lyrics that you hear now are, you know, borrowed from that time. So this, you know, this particular record, in my other collections, you know, it to me it captures a moment in history. Some of the people featured on this album are Ella Fitzgerald, Martha Tilton, um, some of the you know musical artists, uh, Bunny Bergen, if you know him, Ziggy Elman, Harry James, and then um, it's some of the arrangements um, are Jimmy Mundy, Count Basie, I'm sure you know that, Cloud Thornhill. So there's there's a lot of talent on this record, and. Um, I'm going to go ahead and play you a sample from side um, A and side B, starting with, let's see, this is the one that's the most famous song that you've seen in countless movies. You'll know it as soon as you hear it. So I'm going to play you a sample of Sing Sing. you get <laughs> but I'm sure you recognize it I mean that's the song people think of when they hear about you know that swing errors and I know you've heard it in lots of movies so the next one I'm going to play um, you may or may not be as familiar with but it's one of my favorites it's the one that I told you um, appeared in the film Stowaway but I can also think of other movies that it's appeared in and it's just a good kind of um lullaby and this one is called good night my love <laughs> sample 
example of that one. There actually there are actual lyrics to that song, but um, it's more about you know the instruments, so they don't really come in to like the second or third verse. But if you're familiar with the song, just the way the melody is played, you know the words that are being said, even though you don't hear them yet. <clears throat> so that is my 1968 RC Press of the best of Benny Goodman. Um, I hope you liked it. Um, you can look it up online. I think I saw it. You can buy it on Amazon for like $6. Or... You can do what I did and go hunting for it in a record store or a thrift store or something like that. Maybe you'll get a deal. Maybe you'll get one that don't have, that doesn't have any scratches on it. Um, but even if you do, get it, hold it, smell it, look at it, play it. You'll like it. So that's all that you know. I really have for today. Um, if you're interested in hearing the rest of those songs. I will try to have links in the description or the show more section at the end of the video so please check that out and um, you can like I said you can look it up and probably find you know all the songs that are on the album to listen to those if you don't get a copy for yourself so uh, if you um, want to ask me a question or tell me your you know your thoughts about this episode go ahead and leave your two cents in the comments below Next month, I will be featuring the album Queen, A Night at the Opera. So we're going to, you know, head into the 80s, and it's going to be fun. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter. You can share images or, you know, tell me stories about your vinyl experiences. I love to hear them. You can use the hashtag vinyl on my mind, and you'll have a chance to be featured in my next episode. Uh, next Saturday... I will be posting another episode of So Yell Cards, and you know, that's just a funny show. But I want you to come back on Monday because I will be sharing my book review and rant of Who Censored Roger Rabbit and A Discovery of Witches. And that's always interesting. So <laughs> remember, if you are interested in guest hosting or sponsoring a Toy Box webisode, you can visit etoythomas.com to learn more about that. So until next time, this is Toy Thomas saying that I believe that authors are just as important to the world of entertainment as music groups and movie stars. See ya.